better if it had something on it. Me wish this stopped again. It's a whammin today, it's a whammin. Right. We have a new one. But before I put it on, I've got to conclude the story. And this is it. got to Calais and I couldn't keep the bike running at Calais um, it just was not possible because you, you can't keep it running for that long without causing some damage to the engine um, in my opinion so I went in and I remember I hadn't bought a ticket so I just turned up and bought a ticket there which worked out cheaper than, than when I looked online for some peculiar reason don't know bought a ticket said to the woman this is about I don't know up past 10 something like that at night um, said to the woman when's the next ferry she said the next P&O ferry was quarter past four in the morning that'd be six hours away or there's one at one o'clock a.m. I said I'll have that one then. So I sat there for a bit and I said, um, I said to one behind the, the counter, I said, have you got any jump leads? My bike's just stopped. She said, you are joking because you're not allowed to be on the ferry with a broken motorcycle. I said, oh, I'm only kidding with you. I'm only joking. Anyway. Breakdown truck, there's always a breakdown truck in Calais. So I asked the guy with the breakdown truck, 
have you any um, jump leads or the booster pack to start the bike? Yes, he said. Yes. I said, well, don't need it yet. I'll be over in a minute. Went back into the check-in woman about uh, quarter past 11, something like that. I said, what time do you want me on the, on the jetty, on the boat? She said, now, because the next ferry was quarter past four, there was a queue a mile long to get through the passport and all that. Back over to the breakdown guy. I said, have you got the uh, jump release? He went, oh, he said, I'm not the breakdown guy. He said, you want to speak to that man over there? Now that man over there was surrounded by police. Don't know why, didn't ask, don't speak French. Went over to him and I said, excuse me. I said, have you got the cables, the jump leads? He went, no, and he laughed. It was kind of like a, a no. <laughs> You're broke down, I'm not helping you. Nah, 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 nah. My immediate thought was, bastard. But he was surrounded by police. I said to the French copper, I said, have you got any jump leads in the back of your car? He said, I'm a policeman, not a breakdown bloke. Can't argue with that. He was taken away that breakdown bloke by the police that said he's a policeman, not a breakdown bloke. Thanks, Mitch. So now I was stuck. Another break, I mean, at Calais, they're, they're like a revolving, it's like a revolving thing with breakdown trucks because so many people there, so many people break down every hour, every minute, sort of thing. Next guy comes in, I said, Excuse me, I said, have you got the breakdown? He, no, haven't got him. He'd come to put petrol or diesel into this Arab guy's Mercedes. You've got a Mercedes and you run out of diesel at Calais. Next guy come in. I said, excuse me, have you got the break? The K yes, yes, he said, uh, where are you? I said, oh, the, the Harley over there. He said, ah, I'll be over in a minute, he says, in Frenchish. Comes over. Starts the bike. Now again, I've had to ring the breakdown, the um, insurance company, and say, like, I don't need any breakdown assistance because my bike started now. And again, the, the phone's wedged up the side of me crash helmet, and oh, you know what I mean. Go straight to the uh, passport control. Gets through that engine running all the time, queuing up, and it's do it, do it. It takes ages to get through passport, then ages again to get through DFDS. Finally, I'm on the jetty. Ferry ain't there. Bugger. Can't turn the engine off. See, it's there. The ferry comes in in the next sort of five minutes. So it weren't bad. And usually the ferry comes in, ramps go down, and you're on. It all takes about 10 minutes. Yeah, by the time the others have left the ferry and all that. Um, this time it didn't. The ferry comes in, the ramps didn't go down. They stayed up for about 10 minutes. No traffic came off, nothing went on. It was it was getting to be a silly silly exercise. In the end, ramps go down, traffic comes off, and I ride on. And I ride on, I ride straight into they got like a, a clamp now for your front wheel, and they bolt your bike down from two points. So it takes three of you now to bolt your bike down. It used to only take one person, you. Now it takes three of you to bolt one bike down. Ridiculous. Wait a minute. I'm on the ferry. Relax. Go to sleep. I, I found myself a lot, quiet little nookie hole. Went to sleep for an hour. Lovely. Must have been, it must have been the Muslim Express because everybody on that boat either have a headscarf on or they had 16 kids with headscarves on. It was, it was one of them kind of boats. And I, I don't know whether they think it was cheaper of a night time. I just don't know. Anyway, gets to Dover. And I know my bike won't start, but I know they've got a booster pack on the boat. Guys come over to me and says, hey, start your bike. I went, no. I said, I must have left the radio on. Bike won't start, flat back. 
he said, no, start your bike. I went, no, I won't. So I turned the bike on, pushed the start motor, nothing. Said, Battery, no good. I said, I think I left the radio on. Anyway, pulls over the, the booster, bump, starts the bike, and I get off. Now, because I stopped a little way out of Calais to get fuel, I know once I get on the road and I start thinking about it and my head starts coming around in the cool night air, um, I know that I'm not going to get home. I've got to get as far as I possibly can, and I aim for MFK, Milton fucking Keynes. Um, because I know the Tesco's garage is there and you can pay by card. Um, so that's what I do. Now I must admit, it was a tough journey, it was a tough ride. I was I was nodding off. I I, I really was. It was it was an, it was a horrible, horrible ride back. Um it was dark, I had no headlight I was um it was Lu it was Lucas Lord of the Darkness headlight. If anyone can remember the old Lucas headlights. Um, anyway, it's one of them. So I nearly crashed into a lorry. I nearly hit a car. It was all all these things going on, but I had to get home. Stupid, I know, but I just wanted to get home. I'd had enough. Gets to MFK, Milton fucking Keynes. Gets to the Tesco. Still trying to keep my bike running. Puts my card in, because I'm a world champion now. The one armed wallet out, card out, you know, world champion at now, I can't be beaten. Puts my card in, card not accepted. Bastard. Having a laugh, so for all now, and I'm, I'm rubbing the card in my jeans and, you know, getting all the, trying to get it clean. Put my card back in, card not accepted. I ride to another pump, card not accepted. Bollocks, because I ain't going to get home on what I've got. I've done 100 and, I think I've done 160 miles, 165 miles by that point, and the, the fuel gauge, it, you know, it's pretty good, it's not bad, and it was near the E mark, and I thought, I just ain't going to get home. Um, I didn't want to take a chance on, my thought process was, alright, I might be able to get home, but is it worth breaking down two miles from home? Is it worth breaking down five miles from home? Um, because to where I live, it, it's a lot of country lanes, kind of. It's the A509, but at night, it might as well be in the middle of nowhere. Um, or in the morning, as it is. Um, it was about half past four in the morning <coughs> when I got to MFK. <coughs> oh dear. Card won't be accepted in the pumps, so my choice was go to the cash point, get some money out of the, the, at the cash point. I don't know why, because there weren't anybody in the kiosk. It ain't like I could have paid with cash anyway. But I think part of me was was just making sure my card was all right. You know that that's when that was what I was thinking. But it must have looked really dodgy because I'm riding around this garage trying to get this card in and none of it's accepted then I ride over and I ride to the um, the cash point in Tesco's and I ride up to the cash point with the engine still running now there are people about and they must have think what the fuck's he up to must have looked really dodgy but it's MFK don't care gets £10 out quick idea go back to the garage I know there are people that go through that garage in the morning because I used to go to work at that time in the morning and people were in that garage. Uh, I used to work near, uh, well, in, in MFK, but down the road from Tesco's. Pulls up at the garage. Luckily, there's a bloke on the pump that I was at. He's got a little KA, but he's putting petrol in. Good start. Said to him, excuse me, mate. I said, if I give you this tenner, because I've still got the tenner in my hand, I uh, said, so if I'll give you this tenner, will you put £10 in my bike, please? I said, it wouldn't take me card. Yes, mate. He said, not a problem. So that's what he'd done. Proceeded to do All the time, the engine's running. I said to him, I can't turn the engine. Obviously, I've got, I've got dud battery. Anyway, 
say, done that, got me to turn her in. I said, ridiculous, isn't it? I said, I drove all that way and all I've got to go is like 15 miles up the road, Urchester. He went, I live in Urchester. I thought, well, small world. Anyway, gets the fuel, gets back on the road. As I go out to pull out the garage, the engine cut out. Now I was moving. I were not moving very fast, but I was moving. So I just let the clutch out, pulled the clutch in, and let the clutch out, and it started. Unbelievable. And that was it. I was on my way home. About 20 minutes later, I was pulling up. Ed Shed had me biking here again. Ed Shed was back in Ed Shed. And that, my friends, is the conclusion of the story of the journey home from where I was. So four goes, but I finally got there. But there's, there's lots of morals to this story. There's lots of morals to part one, two, three, and four. Um, there's lots of lessons to be learnt. And with a bit of luck, I'd have remembered some of them. <laughs> not, not many. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't get one done yesterday, like I promised, said there yesterday, la da da. But I had um, there was lots to do in the morning, and like getting me bit. Um, and I had a wedding to go to in the afternoon, evening. So last night I was at a wedding, getting pleasantly sloshed, um, which was very good. People were buying me drinks left, right, and centre, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. None of them were watching this, so there you go. But thanks anyway. Um, Right, hi to the guys in America. I know you're watching Toots. How you doing? I hope you're all well. Um, hi to you guys out there. Thanks for watching. And I'll be back with the usual Fred, the Fred Shed stuff um, later on. So I've done four of these in a quick succession. It'll probably be next week or during this week that I'll do another Red Shed. But I'm going to try and do this regularly now. I've got to make more effort. That's what it is. I've got to make more effort to put these videos out. Because I do like doing them. And apparently you like watching them. So there you go. So, it's it. Happy Sunday. It's a Sunday afternoon here. It is... Do you know what? This bloody thing. It's never worked. Um, and I'll be back with you soon. I hope you enjoyed the story, boys. See you later.